And now onto the question of the moment, the question that you posed, Billy. These are, these are exciting times. I could feel it on a cellular level. You know, people talk about momentum. You know it when you feel it. If you just take a beat for a second, if you feel that, that vibration, that's the political momentum that pundits often talk about. We're in it and it's moving in our direction. We've seen record digital fundraising for Harris, more than 80 million in the first day. If you need permission to be excited, you officially have it. You have permission to be excited. We don't often get opportunities to shift political momentum in our favor. Um, you know, Latasha said it so perfectly, but over the last few months, Republicans had some momentum, especially over the last month. We were in a strange sort of perilous place that made everyone I talked to feel a sense of dread, a sense of doom. It was a little cloudy. Now we're out of that place. We have new marching orders for a new political era at, at, at the perfect time when we need the momentum towards the end stretch over the last 100 days. Now, we don't need more pundits. We don't need more predictors. We don't need more people getting on and off the polar coasters. We don't need more hang ringing. We need to be strategic actors. That includes us practitioners and donors in this conversation. Now that we are in a different moment, we need to be focused and show up as a united front. WFP has been building a part of that united front. And many of you have built that with us. You're why we are here. In terms of our plans of the structure, nothing structural has changed, Billy, just to answer your question. The momentum has shifted, but nothing structural has changed. What has changed is the momentum. That puts us in a unique and fortuitous position. Doran spoke about the fact that, that her assessment is that we have everything that we need. That is my assessment. We have the vehicles. We have the, 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 the tested tactics. We have the strategic brilliance. We have the organizations that are uniquely positioned to have deep and trusted relations, relation, uh, conversations with the people that we need to have trusted conversations with. Our plans are validated and tested. What is required of us between now and election day is execution, execution. And execution requires at least three things. This is my assessment. Number one, a coordinated campaign that inspires hope. Check, we now have that. Welcome. Number two, a campaign's preferred independent expenditure vehicle. And that will ramp up after Labor Day with the, on TV and digital. That preferred IE vehicle is going to be, already has a lot in its coffers and is going to be unleashing a torrent of TV and digital post Labor Day. Check. And number three, an independent grassroots infrastructure that is functioning at its highest level. So if the IE and coordinated campaign are successful, that, that is coordinated, that is uh, number one and number two, if those two things are successful, they will bring the margin of victory incredibly close. And I have all expectation that Kamala Harris's campaign, the coordinated campaign and the IE will run the way that they need to run. The remaining gap, that remaining gap, and we know, we've known this for years. We saw this in 2020. These elections have consistently been close. So that remaining gap is the margin of our organizing. Filling it is the role of independent grassroots infrastructure like WFP and the broad ecosystem that Movement Voter Project supports. Groups we work with every single day on the ground in battleground states. Billions, with a B, will go into the first and second categories, the first and second machines, as they should. The campaign and the independent expenditure vehicles must be fully resourced. Gail and Oprah and Sandra will make sure Harris has a billion dollars, trust me. Two of those categories are going to be fully funded, as they should be. Your job, and this is why you're on this call, as funders who are showing up to a Movement Voter Project briefing, is funding the last third, the grassroots plan to close the margin of, of organizing, the grassroots plan to victory. Without you, this third part will be left behind. And the third part is essential. 
The third part isn't window dressing. The third part isn't a cherry on top. The third part is an essential third. And you should, if you're a praying person or or if you're a religious person, thank that deity. If you are a philosophical person, uh, wonder why you are here in this moment and this time on this call. And I would say it's you're being called into filling that essential gap. Thank God for times that are morally clear because it allows all of us to decide where we want to be on history and which side of history we want to be on. This is your calling to be on the right side of history, to be with the right people situated to align and make a historic intervention on that third piece. The margin of organizing will be closed by a united front. WFP has been preparing for and is primed and ready for this moment. We are positioned to hold the coalition together from uncommitted voters to labor to centrist Democrats who share a goal of defeating MAGA. This election is going to require a united front electoral organizing posture that requires everyone to the front to be disciplined. So after this moment of exuberance, I wanna be clear, we have to be prepared. There will be a moment of backlash, racist and misogynist backlash. A united front means we must anticipate and respond to it. Our leaders and our messengers are uniquely positioned to be able to preempt that backlash. People like Alex, people like Latasha, people like Doran in their communities. A united front means those of us who support a ceasefire will be emboldened if Harris chooses, for example, not to attend that Netanyahu speech in front of Congress tomorrow, or today, actually. And it might mean we are disappointed when they have a closed door bilateral meeting tomorrow, right? But the reality is that Harris is going to need to bring people into this coalition that don't always agree with us. And so we need to be sophisticated and we need to be clear-eyed about building the biggest tent that includes a very, very strong progressive faction that is super focused on all of our issues from immigration to a, a foreign policy that aligns to our values, through Medicaid for all, through a truly democratic economy. We could do both. It is not an either or. We could hold the contradictions and nuances. That is what makes us strategic thinkers. That is what makes us top level strategists. It's that nuance. This is a moment of disruption. Moments of disruption provide opportunities, but they provide opportunities for those that are the most organized. I didn't say the most right. I didn't say the most righteous. I said the most organized. We need to be a steady hand, an organized hand. All of us need to be part of the same vehicle. For many of you and for many of the labor and community folks that we work with every single day, WFP is a vehicle. For many of you, Movement Voter Project is a vehicle. We need to build a field coalition and a funder coalition. This is your time. Prior to this weekend, you might have wondered if your investments this cycle mattered or if they would be effective. Would my investments actually translate? Would they be efficacious? Is this a, is this a losing battle? And that may have been a legitimate question, honestly. I peered into the abyss more times than I'd like to admit. But on Sunday, we received a gift when Biden endorsed Harris, passing the torch. And I don't normally do this with any of y'all, but I am now giving you all instructions, right? So Alex said it best. She feels like she's a she is a general. We have field generals. Your job is to listen to them and be lieutenants in this united front against fascism, against MAGA. I am giving you instructions as a field general. Now is the moment to make a strategic investment in independent progressive infrastructure. Resources needed to get into the field in places like Milwaukee and Philadelphia yesterday. Billions will be raised and spent between now and November. And there is a unique piece of that hole that you all could fill today that few others can fill. Fund the ecosystem and fund it in a way where you know we're going to win. Close that margin of organizing. Fund us like we're going to win. We need you to join us in making a strategic uh, intervention right now. And, and I'm, making, I'm making a personal news. Tomorrow is my birthday. If that wasn't convincing, 
Make me an early birthday present. Yeah. And right, there's somebody here. I don't know who you are. I know there's maybe a thousand of us. I don't know who you are, but I'm talking directly to you. You right now are considering whether or not you should write the largest political donation in your life. I am giving you permission to do that today, to do that before this call ends. You know who I'm talking to. If I'm speaking to your spirit, if you feel that tension as organizers, when we feel that tension, when it feels, when you feel that that sense that I might be doing something so audacious, I might, I might regret it tomorrow, that's the good stuff. That's when you know you're in the fight. Write a check that makes you that makes you a little scared. That's the check that we need in order to build on this momentum. We need you to join us in making a strategic intervention today. Write a check that reflects this historic moment. For us to be successful in meeting our progressive governance goals, we need to show that we are a faction. We're not foot soldiers. For those of you that are concerned about immigration, for, for those of you that are concerned about Gaza, for those of you that are concerned about public safety, we are not foot soldiers in the Democratic Party's um, uh, army. We're not just getting along and folding in. We are a strategic faction in a united front for democracy. And VP Harris happens to lead that united front. We're clear-eyed. We need you today to bring us home. Back to you, Billy.